Today's lesson, like I said, is going to be called Laws of Logarithms, concept 4.3, moving right along through some of my absolute favorite material. In the last lesson, we talked about log base A and really tried to drive home the idea that a logarithm is an operation, an inverse operation, in fact, the inverse of exponential bases. So exponential bases and logarithms of the matching base are inverse operations and they will cancel each other in either order. What that means is the rules of exponents, like when you multiply two numbers with the same base, you add the exponents, things like that, they have logarithm counterparts because, well, logarithms, their job is to get to isolate variables, or not variables, to uh, exponents. So, yeah, we have logarithmic counterparts to the exponential rules. This first one over here says, and these, by the way, are on the IB reference sheet, but this first one says that, and it's actually, I think it's written backwards in my opinion, I like to look at it like this. If you have a multiplication inside the argument, then that is the addition of two different logarithms. Basically, it's like saying, when you multiply two numbers with the same base, you add the exponents. So it's the same kind of rule, sort of. But yeah, if you have a product inside the argument, that is the sum of two different logs, they, and they have the same base as the original. Well, the same kind of logic is why the second one is true. If you have a quotient in the argument, then it is the difference of two logarithms with the same base, but it's always going to be top minus bottom, just like it is when I say like x to the fifth over x to the second. You know, when you divide two numbers at the same base, you subtract the exponents, and it's always top minus bottom, right? It's the same idea. So log of quotient, it's going to be log of top minus log of bottom. Boom, there you go. As long as they have the same matching base, you're in good shape there. And then the last one says, when you have an exponent in the argument, that exponent can be moved to the front of the log. It's like when you multiply two numbers of the same base, you, excuse me, when you raise a power to a power, you multiply the exponents. So that's why we end up with a product on the left side. So those are the three basic logarithm rules. Of course, there's a couple more log rules that do neat things, but you don't have to know them or understand them for IB math. So that's it for IB math. Those are the three basic log rules. Cool with those? I mean, we're going to practice, obviously. You know what's not a log rule? Students always want to do something like this. Let me see. Um, these are, these are non-rules, okay, these non-rules. I always show this to the Algebra 2 students, like, here's things that you wish there was a rule for, and there's just not. Like, I'm not going to write base, because who cares? Like, log of A times log of B. Whoops. Have it. I was putting a parentheses around my argument. This is not log of AB. Students want it to be, but it's not. I want it to be, but it's not. Okay. So what is log of A times log of B? It's log of A times log of B. There's just nothing else you can do with it. It doesn't get any prettier than that. And the same thing goes for log A divided by log B. You know, that's not log of A over B. It's just not. It's just not. Okay. Also, what happens if there's addition in the argument? It, it, there's addition in the argument. There's nothing you can do. Subtraction in the argument? Yeah, there's subtraction in the argument. There's nothing you can do. There's just not rules for those things. Okay. Those are the three rules, and you need to know them, master them, use them, all that good stuff. So here we're going to use the logarithms at, to or use the laws of log logarithms to write these as a single log or as an integer. You don't need a calculator for this because we're not looking for answers, so to speak. I don't need to know what log of 5 equals. What I need to see is that here I have the sum of two logs that have the same base, and they do have the same base. They're both base 10. They're both the common log. Well, when you add two logs with the same base, you multiply their arguments. So this is going to be log of 5 times 3. I'm just showing lots of work. And so you're going to get log of 15. So yeah, log of 5 plus log of 3 is equal to log of 15. Not bad, right? 
The next one is the difference of two logs. Since they have the same base, the difference of two logs can be thought of as a single logarithm with a quotient. So it's going to be log base 3 of 24 divided by 8. What's 24 divided by 8? Oh, that's right. Log base 3 of 3, which is 1. Because what it says is, what power of 3 gives you a 3? 1. Because exponential base 3 cancels, I mean, because log base 3 cancels exponential base 3, technically, there was, can we say that that argument, that 3, couldn't we say that it was technically 3 to the first power? And then here's the log base 3 doing its job, leaving behind the exponent of 1. That's how you can think about it if you'd like to. Okay. The last one looks a little bit tricky. Because all the rules showed me combining things that were both logarithms, right? But you also just saw me say that log base 3 of 3 was 1. Anything that could be done in math could be undone. So in this next question where it says log base 2 of 5 minus 1, you know that you can't combine logs unless they have the same... Actually, it's not even a log. You can't combine things with logs. You can only combine common logs with common base. What? He's playing a game and he's watching the game. Come on. You can only combine two logarithms if they have the same base, and that means we need that negative one to actually be a log that is base two. So, oh goodness, that's not the right color. Anywho, like I was trying to say, it's going to give me log base two of five. I'm going to say minus. And instead of saying one, I'm going to say something that is log base two so I can combine these things. Log base two of two. That's equal to 1. And now I have something going on like I did in part B, where I have the difference of two logarithms with the same base. So this can be written as log base 2 of 5 halves. And it doesn't get any better than that. I mean, you could write log base 2 of 2.5, but there'd be no point. It doesn't get any better than that. Not too bad, right? Just using the rules. And these are rules that you should have learned in Algebra 2 and memorized in Algebra 2. And does that mean you understood them in Algebra 2? It does not. Even after the way that I explained it. Well, you know, when you multiply two numbers at the same base, you add the exponents. That's why when you have the log of a product, you're adding two different logs. You, you almost get an understanding of why it works. But have you ever seen, let's use the word proof, the proof of why they work? where they came from. It's not like we just stumbled across them. You know, ooh, look, I found this neat pattern. No, that's not how that works in mathematics. I'll show you after the notes. I'll prove to you that they work. Okay, it says simplify by writing as a single log or as a rational number. All right, well, this first one I have the uh, difference of two logarithms. But there's a problem. Those logarithms have numbers in front of them. Those two numbers can't be there if I'm going to combine these two logarithms. So the very first thing I need to do is realize that if I use rule three, the third rule, I could take those numbers and I could bring them back to the exponent position of the argument. So this could be log of seven squared, and this could be log of two to the third. which is log of 49 minus the log of 8. And now, since I have the difference of two logarithms with the same base, and they are both base 10, I can write this as a single logarithm. Log of 49 over 8. Part B, we're going to do something similar. That 2. First thing we're going to do is we're going to scoot it into the exponent position of the argument. Log of 3 squared plus 3. Huh. You know, we were told to either write this thing as a rational number, and log of 9 is never going to be pretty. 
or as a single logarithm. That means that that three needs to be something that has a log in it. It needs to be able to be combined with log base 10 of nine. I'm not writing base 10, but in order for me to pull this off, there needs to be a logarithm after that three. So what you do is you imagine, and this is, you don't ever have to do this kind of stuff, but what you can do is you can imagine this as three times one. And log base 10 would cancel exponential base 10. So that one can be thought of as saying log of, whoops, I was gonna write LG. log of 10, there, because log of 10 is 1. That's log base 10 of 10. Now I can scoot this 3 into the exponent position, log of, I wrote 3, log of 9 plus log of 10 to the third, which is log of 1,000. And now, lastly, when you add two loggers in the same base, multiply their arguments, we get log of 9,000. <clears> That's not over 9,000. It's exactly 9,000. It's not over 9,000. Yes, I had to make the Dragon Ball Z joke. Yes. It's done. It's over with. You can't take it back. It's already happened. Hey, guess what log of 8 divided by log of 4 is not? It's not log of two. It just is not. So what are we going to do? Hmm. Let's see. Okay, I got an idea. Tell me, what do you know that's special about the numbers eight and four? What's that? They're both base two numbers. So what we could do is we can write this as log of two to the third divided by log of two squared. And we could use that last log rule that said, yo, if they got an exponent in the argument, scoot it to the front. So I could take this 3 and drop it there, and I could take this 2 and drop it there. And what that's going to leave me is 3 log 2 divided by 2 log 2. Look, I don't know what log of 2 equals. I know it's a small number. I know it's between 0 and 1. But I don't know what it equals. But you know what? Who cares? Because log of 2 divided by log of 2 is 1. So it cancels out and it just leaves me with 3 halves. Ta-da! Good? Okay, look, if you're not comfortable with these things, I need you saying something to me. Okay? Logs are... They can be frightening for people, and I want to make sure that they're not frightening anymore. I want to make sure that you understand them. You have a deep understanding, maybe even a love for logarithms like I do. You know, those tattoos, those people get the hearts, and it says, like, mom in the middle. Mine says log, you know. <laughs> he says that's the day my mom stopped loving me. <laughs> Alrighty, so... Hey, look, every IB student's favorite thing is show that. Let me tell you what that means. You are not allowed to write this until it's the very last thing. You start with the left and you manipulate the left side until it equals the right side. That's what show that. Um, no, because that's assuming it's true. I don't know. I mean, doesn't do that. Logically, yes, but I mean, doesn't like to do that. I mean, when they say show that something is something else, you need to start on the left and work your way right. Okay, so we start with log of one ninth, and what we're going to do is we're just going to manipulate this until we land somewhere useful. First thing I notice is a fraction in my argument. The fraction can actually, so the fraction inside the argument can be split into two logarithms that are being subtracted. So what does it give me? It gives me log of one, it's always top minus bottom, minus log of nine. Well, log, this common log is base 10 
Hmm. And remember, log says what power of. So log base 10 says what power of 10? So what does log base 10 of 1 say? It says what power of 10 would give me this 1? That's what it's asking you. What would I have to raise 10 to in order to get the answer 1? 10 raised to what power equals 1? No, 10 to the 10 is huge. 10 to the 10 is 10 billion. Come on, 10 to what power equals 1? Zero. 0, thank you, it's 0. That's a special log from Algebra 2. It says anytime the argument equals 1, the logarithm's value automatically equals 0. That's one of the special ones. When the, the other special one that you were showing in Algebra 2 is when the base and argument match, that log equals 1. And I've already used that rule a couple times. Oh, and by the way, 9 is 3 squared, right? So 0 minus log of 3 squared, and you just scoot this 2 to right there. And you know what? There's no reason to say the 0 anymore. So negative 2 log of 3, and you go, oh, look, that's, a, that's what I was trying to show. All right, cool. We showed it. Yeah? So if I convert the negative 2 log of 3 to log of 1, that's what I do. That's what he was asking. Now you need to start on the left and work your way to the right for IB, for IB purposes. True math proof logic is you can start on the left or the right or both, and it doesn't matter if you meet in the middle or if you work your way from right to left, but for IB wants us specifically to start on the left and work your way to the right. You know what you could do though? If you ever get stumped and you go, I, if I could start on the right and work my way left, that'd be fine. You could start on the right, work your way left, and then put an X through it, a big X through it, and then just write it in reverse, and you're fine. Because they're not allowed to grade it if it's been X'd out. Yep. Yeah, we could have just said, oh, log of 3 to the negative 2. But I wanted to show lots of steps. So, yeah, that might have been easier, but I wanted this, I wanted to showcase this idea, the whole log base 10 of 1. But yeah, an alternate but equally easy, I'm just gonna go ahead and clear this. An alternate but why well, actually even easier would be this log of one ninth equals log of three to the negative two, which is negative two log of three. I mean, it's much faster, but I did want to showcase that log base 10 of one equals zero. Actually, log base two of one is zero, log base pi of one is zero. It doesn't matter as long as the base is positive. Alrighty, next one. Oh boy. Well, 500. What do we know about the number 500 that's useful to us exponential-wise? It is 5 times 100. Yep. So we can say log of 500 is log of 5 times 100. Okay. That's going to give me log of 5 plus log of 100, uh, 100 is 10 squared, right? So log of 5 plus log of 10 squared, well, log of 10 is 1, because that's log base 10 of 10. So what that gives you is log of 5 plus 2, and then we get, uh, oh, shucks. We were supposed to show that it's 3 minus log of 2. Hmm. So does that mean what we did was wrong? Well, no, no. It, what we did is fine. And that would have been most students' first reaction, right? And that's fine, except for the fact that it didn't get you where you needed to be. So what should we have done is cheat a little bit. Look at where you're going. You needed to land at 3 minus log of 2. What would have produced the minus sign is the logic you have to go through. What gives you a minus sign between two logarithms? Division. Oh. So instead of thinking of 500 as a multiplication of two values, we should have thought of it as a division of two values. So what we did, not wrong. It just didn't land us where we wanted to be. So no big deal, come through, delete it. 
That is often what's going to happen to you when you're doing proofs, uh, especially math proofs. You know, you go, I think I have a way of doing it. You work your way to where you want to get to, you hit a roadblock, you go crud, and you go back. Last year, trig proofs. I mean, how many times did you see me go, well, oh, let me try, let me see where this goes, you know? Like, oh, that didn't work, okay, stop, reset, it's fine. Now, what we needed to do was we needed to think of 500 as the division because of that, of two numbers. Again, you're working ahead a little bit and you go, or you're looking ahead a little bit, you go, hmm, three, its log is missing. That means its log canceled itself out. That means there must have been a log base 10 of 10 somewhere. Well, that's an interesting phone noise. Well, that's a thousand. Log base 10 to the, let's see, log base 10 of 10 and move the three to the front, that's log of a thousand. You know what I'm gonna do? 500, I'm gonna say that 500 is actually a thousand divided by two. Because, you know, 1,000 divided by 2 is 500. This gets you log of 1,000 minus log of 2. Ah, you see, now we're on the right track because now we have that minus log 2 we needed. 1,000 is 10 to the third. And log base 10 of 10 cancels out. So you just get 3 minus log of 2. Log, log 10 cancels out because that says log base 10 of exponential base 10, so they cancel. And it's finished. Okay. Uh, can I scoot? Alrighty. What do we got now? Boom. It says write these as log equations in base 10. All right. Well, the only way that's going to happen is if I... And the reason why we chose base 10 is so I can just write the word log everywhere, all right? Because log means log base 10. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the log of both sides because log is an operation. So take the log of both sides. You get log e, you get log y equals log of a squared b. All right, and now we can expand, it's the verbiage that you would have used in algebra two. We can expand the right side of that. I'm just trying to see how far we want to go with that. How far? Is that even what that was supposed to do? Yep, okay, good. I see a product inside my logarithm. The product has to be dealt with before the exponent. You cannot move that exponent of 2 to the front of that logarithm right now. Because if you do, it implies that the entire argument had that exponent, and it does not. So first you're going to split that into the sum of two logarithms. Log of a squared plus log of b. And now you get to move that exponent of 2 to the front log of y equals 2 log a plus log b. There. Finito. Next one's done. Same process. You have to start by taking the logarithm of both sides. So we just log both sides. Get log e, log of y equals log of fraction a over b to the third. Now again, I cannot move that exponent of 3 to the front of the logarithm because that implies that the entire argument had an exponent of 3, and it doesn't. So instead, we have to deal with the fraction first. We can say that the fraction is actually the difference of two logarithms. So log of a minus log of b cubed. And then lastly, you can move to 3. So log of y log e, equals log of a minus 3 log b. Hmm. Just need to create some vertical space for myself. There we go. C. 
All these things are started the same way. You have to take the log of both sides. Log of P equals log of fraction. And just like the last one, you're going to take that fraction apart before you do anything else. So that's going to be the difference. Log 20 minus log of, well, that square root bar is actually an exponent. It's the one half power. So I can say minus log of n raised to the one half. And then the last thing you would do is just move that one half power to the front of the logarithm. This is the boring logarithm stuff. Yeah. But all these things, all these things are skills that matter. They help us solve logarithmic equations in the future. And that is what we're building up to. It's a lot of letters on the board. If only we had a symbol for log instead of a word. Yeah, like a subroot, yeah. Oh well. Oh well. What is next? Okay. It says write these without logarithms. Hey, look, solving log equations. Woot. Like I just said that. Okay. Write the following without logarithms. That means we're going to undo what we were doing in the last ones. So this is condensing. So we're going to condense. All right. First things first. Take this 2, move it back to the exponent position. Get log of a equals log b plus log of c squared. And then lastly, I see, well not lastly, I guess I have one more step after that. I see the addition of two logs that have the same base. That means I can combine that to a single log multiplication in the argument. Log of bc squared. You know, I'm going to go ahead and throw some parentheses on that argument. And the directions were to write the following equations without logarithms. I need to cancel my logs. These logs are base 10. So how do I cancel log base 10? Exponential base 10 on both sides. So I throw base 10 there and there. And what we get is that a equals bc squared. There's some questions out there. Saw at least one crinkled forehead. Is it because it's hard to see or because they have questions? I call it question face. So you can see question face even when your face is, even when half your face is covered. No? All right. Well then, move right along. Aha. Found you three. No, that's got to be an exponent. Okay. Log base 2 of m equals log base 2 of a to the third uh, minus 2. Oh, crud. Okay, look. The rest of this thing is log base 2. So what can I write after this 2 that essentially means nothing? Think of this 2 as saying 2 times 1. So what equals 1 that is log base 2? Log base 2 of 2. 1 is the same thing as saying log base 2 of 2. Now I could take this 2 and treat it as an exponent of that argument. Log base 2 of m equals log base 2 of a cubed minus log base 2 of 4. 2 squared. Subtraction of two logarithms can be combined into the division of inside a single logarithm. Log base 2 of a cubed over 4. And now you just have to cancel log base 2. And how do I cancel log base 2? 
Somebody said it, exponential base two. So we base two both sides to cancel our logarithms. Logarithms, I can speak. And you get m equals a cubed over four. Ta-da! Ah, oh, finally, some fun stuff. Fun stuff. Solving log equations. I like solving log equations. I'm just waiting to make sure a bunch of people were still writing. Am I good to move? Okay. Okay. Solve for x. Let me tell you what you're not allowed to do right now. What is the one? Uh oh. The meeting has ended. Anyway, what am I not allowed to do right now? The one thing that for some reason every student tries to do but they're not allowed to do right now. They are not allowed to remove the logs right now. You cannot base 10 both sides and cancel these logs. It doesn't work that way. You can only cancel a log if it's the only thing on that side of an equation. So I could try to do that on the right side, it'll be just fine, but on the left side, it will not work. So what we're forced to do is condense first. You must condense these two logarithms into a single logarithm before you can cancel the logs. This is log of x times x plus 2 equals log of 3. Now that there's a single log on the left and a single log on the right, which is why we were doing the whole write it as a single log thing, now that there's a single on each side, I can go ahead and cancel these logs with a matching base. These are log base 10. So exponential base 10 will make them go away. And you are left with a quadratic. x times x plus 2 equals 3. Good old algebra one and two. Distribute your x, and then subtract your three. And then you just factor. The two numbers that multiply to negative three that add to two are positive three and negative one. giving us two solutions, x equals negative 3 and x equals positive 1. But, 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 you have to remember one of the core restrictions on a logarithm. One of them is that the base cannot be 0 or 1. Okay, we haven't broken that rule. The base is 10. The other really big rule is that the argument must be a positive number. The argument must be a positive number but cannot be equal to 1. Yes? The base can't be 0 or 1. Yes. The, oh, the argument, th this is an argument. It's no, you're never allowed to have no, because log base one of one has an infinite number of answers. So that so it's like yeah, it's not allowed. So by definition, the base cannot be zero or one, and the argument must be a positive number. Which means I cannot use negative three because log of negative three will not work. So the only answer is x equals 1. x equals negative 3 is an extraneous solution. Because it makes an argument negative. Does that mean you can't have negative solutions? No, 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 no. You can have negative solutions. They just can't make the argument negative. The argument must be a positive number, must be strictly greater than 0. That's a pretty big deal. Why can't the argument be negative Because you can't raise a positive number to any power and ever get a negative result. Oh, yeah. 
and the argument of a logarithm technically is a result of raising a power to a power, or raising a power to, hold on, I just got this mouth, let me try again. The argument of the logarithm is actually the exponential expression's answer, like that, there we go. So if you said like, what's log base 10 of negative three, you're saying, okay, 10 to what power gives me negative three? No, that's impossible. Yeah, it's, it's literally impossible. Uh, you, you, I think you have to work in the complex plane. So yeah, um, in the real number system, argument must be strictly greater than zero. Base cannot be equal to zero or one. Here we go, I see two logarithms minus sign in between them. Come, oh, it's green. All right, I'm already here. Combine this into a single logarithm with a fraction in its argument. I won't continue writing green. I'll get rid of that right now. I forgot. It's something, there's clearly a problem here. Oops. There's a typo in the notes. There must be a two there. If there's not a two there, it's, you can't ever get rid of the logarithms. Sorry. My apologies. Clearly a typo. Now we can cancel the log base twos with exponential base two on both sides. So we have x squared over x minus two equals three. This is a fraction. You know, all fractions are gotten, they're handled the same way. If you want that fraction to go away, you just multiply both sides by the denominator. So I'm just gonna multiply both sides of this thing by x minus two. Yeah. You, um, no, the base can't be negative either. It can't be, the base can't be negative because you're not allowed to have uh, exponential equations that have negative bases, that's why. So you can't have a, you can't have a function, it's impossible to have a negative base because it would be undefined every time you had a fractional exponent that was even because you can't take the square root or the fourth root or the sixth root of a negative number in the real number system. So exponential equations must have a positive exponential base that's not one. So logarithms must have a positive logar must have a positive base as well that's not one because they're inverse operations that have to follow the same rules. So over here, those are gone. I'm left with x squared equals 3x minus 6. And we just bring everything to one side. I'm out of vertical space. How about that? x squared minus 3x plus 6 equals 0. I feel like there's all kinds of bad things on this equation. What happened? Does not factor. That's not pretty. No, you were going to get imaginary solutions. <laughs> Something went wrong, clearly. Horrifically wrong. There was, all kind, there, there was clearly a problem here. Let's see, what, what would have made it work? Just change the 3 to a 4, just willy-nilly. I don't think that'll fix it either. The 3 would have to be a 5 or a 1. I don't know. Something went stupid here. How about this? We're going to have to call it there because we can't keep working this question because the results are imaginary and that's not allowed. Realize that the process was perfect, that I typed a wrong number somewhere. The equation was borked. The equation was borked, but the process was fantastic. Okay, normally you would have factored here, solved for x, and then made sure that none of your arguments were negative. But somehow or another, I goofed. <laughs>